a bank that caters to many of the world's most powerful tech investors, collapsed on Friday and was taken over by federal regulators, becoming one of the largest banks to fail since the 2008 global financial crisis. A rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed over the weekend. And the anatomy of a rescue from the federal government. In this video, we will be discussing one of the biggest financial collapses in recent history. The collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB. We'll be exploring the history of the bank, the reasons behind its collapse, and the aftermath of this event. Silicon Valley Bank was founded in 1983 as a financial services company for technology startups. The bank was headquartered in Santa Clara, California, and quickly gained popularity among tech startups. If you are a high-growth startup, it was difficult to get a credit card from a normal credit card provider. You could not get a loan from a big bank, but SVP would give you that. The bank did business with well-known tech companies, including Shopify, Pinterest, Fitbit, and thousands of lesser-known startups, in addition to established venture capital firms like Andresin Horowitz. So while we hadn't been VCs, we had a very good idea of what it was like to be on the other side of the table and to actually be the consumer of the product, if you will. The bank was on farm financial footing last Wednesday. The following day, it was underwater. California banking regulators shut down SVP and put it into receivership under the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. So what happened? In some ways, Silicon Valley Bank was a victim of its own successes. Its businesses boomed as tech companies did well during the pandemic. That filled the lenders' coffers, and SVP had about $174 billion in deposits. SVP then invested a large chunk of the cash into long-term U.S. government securities. That seemed smart at the time. Long-term government debt is generally considered to be the safest investment you can make. But the value of those securities began to slide after the Federal Reserve started raising rates aggressively to fight inflation. Those rate hikes came just as there was a contraction in funding for startups. Tech companies were spending company cash fast, but struggling to raise money. So they began dipping into their deposits, withdrawing more and more cash from their Silicon Valley bank accounts. In order to top up its reserves, SVP was forced to sell some of its investments. But those bonds, safe as they were, were worth a lot less on the open market because newer bonds had higher interest rates. The bank thus took a huge loss in the sale, a total of $1.8 billion. The announcement of that disastrous bond sale freaked the bank's customers out. Customers got worried about SVP's viability and then proceeded to withdraw even more money from the bank, a textbook definition of a bank run. That led to a major slump in SVP's shares. The bank stock price fell by 60% on Thursday, and its share price continued to sink overnight. Trading was halted on Friday morning, and by midday, SVP had been taken over by the FDIC. It was a collapse that sent shockwaves across the banking industry, hammering shares of other smaller and regional lenders. The collapse of SVP triggered a crisis for tech startups, which had relied on the Santa Clara-based bank for decades. It also had far-reaching implications on the wider economy. The bank's collapse also led to concerns of a knock-on effect on other financial institutions. But the SVP is a special case. The bank got most of its funding from deposits and had more than 50% of its assets in securities. So it had to sell some to give depositors back their money. Of course, a lot more happier people here today than we saw on Friday. And from the folks that we've been talking to, the founders say that their number one concern over the weekend was making payroll this week. So that announcement from the government um, is very good for them and they want to wait and see what happens next. We spoke to one guy at the Santa Clara headquarters who um, is trying to move his money from Silicon Valley Bank to another. He was lined up from 2 a.m. this morning. Most banks have a wider range of funding sources and assets. In most cases, they hold their bonds to maturity without ever realizing the paper losses. The FDIC said that those with insured deposits at SVB, typically up to $250,000, would be able to access their money. 
The fate of those with deposits that exceeded insurance limits was less certain. On Sunday, however, the Biden administration announced that all of SVP's customers, whether they were insured or not, will have full access to their deposits. Thanks to the quick action of my administration over the past few days, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. It was a highly unusual move by federal officials to backstop billions of dollars in uninsured money, reflecting widespread fears that the bank's collapse could lead to a greater panic. SVP was not connected to the rest of the financial system by a complicated network of credit derivatives in the way that Lehman Brothers and other troubled banks were in 2008. However, Silicon Valley Bank wasn't the only lender to go bust over the weekend. Signature Bank, a New York-based lender that focuses on the crypto market, was shut down by New York regulators on Sunday. Government officials said that all customers of the bank would get their money back too, regardless of how much they have in their accounts. Signature's demise follows the failure of another crypto-focused bank, San Diego-based Silvergate, which announced last Wednesday that it had decided to wind down its operations and pay back depositors. Bank failures are not unheard of, but America hasn't seen any since 2020. And now there has been three in one week, a frequency we haven't seen since the financial crisis back in 2008. The prospect of more spooked depositors pulling their money out of their bank because it might be suffering some kind of stresses as SVP still worried the government. It was a scenario nightmarish enough for federal authorities to act decisively to try and prevent what they thought could turn into another financial crisis.